Hello and welcome to another tip on Maximo. I'm your host, Chris Winston. This session will review the basics on electronic signature or eSig and electronic audit record or eAudit in Maximo 7.5. Please note that this functionality is delivered and install with the core application. You will, however, need to configure it. As a reminder, if you have any specific topics you wish covered, please send an email to media at projectech.com. To better depict the functionality, and of course in the interest of time, we'll be using an example that has already been configured in our demo instance. Our example has both the eSig and eAudit features turned on for the asset object, specifically the fields asset type, failure code, and priority. During the process of setting this up, we can begin with the security groups application to go and turn on login tracking. Once that's done, of course, you don't have to do it again. You just need to do it once for the application. Next, we will go to database configuration, configuring the primary object or table, in our case, asset, the attributes or fields uh, for eSig and eAudit and signature actions for new and save. Please remember to configure both new and save as new will capture the initial record creation details and save would then pick up the subsequent modifications. Last thing we'll do is we'll take a look at audit trail reporting and the common tables that are involved. So again this is what we look like in the security groups uh, application to set the login tracking feature to on. Now we move into the object and specific identify the particular table and enable the auditing and that'll give us an A underscore table name as the default but again at this point you can change what that name is actually going to be. And we move on uh, to the individual attributes or fields and designate them either to auto enabled, uh, signature enabled, or both. They are independent so you can do one without the other. Last thing, we want to make sure that the eSig actions for new and save are again both utilized. From a reporting standpoint, the login tracking table is going to contain the primary information around the electronic signature including success or failure and any reason uh, that has been entered. The audit table, A underscore table name typically, will contain the audit information including uh, the actual data from those fields being audited each time uh, there's a change and of course a timestamp as well as the recognition of the individual performing the update and a tie-in to the electronic signature reference if that is applied. From a audit trail type reporting it's basically looking at a combination of what's in the login tracking table that has electronic signature and then the audit table A underscore table name that has the audit information. And again, just a couple of notes, the eSig and eAudit can be in applied independently. And remember uh, to set the eSig action for both new and save. And let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So what we have on the right is a general window around a database uh, SQL tool, in this case uh, Microsoft SQL Server and several query statements. I won't bother getting into the details of those, but essentially what I'm doing is going ahead and looking at the uh, three main areas, the uh, login tracking table, uh, the individual audit table for the asset, and from here uh, a combination, uh, essentially a combination of both the asset and login tracking getting closer to what someone might be looking for around uh, audit trail type information and generally you'll see audit trail much more robust than this but this is just to kind of give you a general idea of what happens so right now as I execute the queries 
what you're seeing is no results because this machine has not actually been entered. So I'm going to go ahead and create this asset. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a type. And I'm not going to fill anything else in. I'm just going to go ahead and save it. I've been requested to enter in my password. If I can remember it. And the reason for change is a freeform text field, although you can configure it to a list. So now when I go to execute the restructured query language statements, I see I was successful in getting it entered. And when I look at the combination, I, I have the audit information, so we see asset type is filled in, priority and failure code remain empty. So I'll go ahead and I'll change the type. I will add a failure class. And let's give it a priority. Why don't we do that as well? So we'll save it again. And we'll enter in the reason and password. And again, we'll go ahead and run the structure query language statements. And now we see, and we've got a new timestamp, and every time this is occurring, we have the updated information now uh, for the fields and the com combined information uh, that we have via the combined SQL statement grabbing data from both tables. Generally, what you'll find from an audit trail standpoint will probably be a little more robust than this, and looking at differences and flagging them as well. But this should give you a general idea of sort of what happens on the front screen, what happens behind the screen in the database, and where you would go to uh, query and to document the quote-unquote audit trail that you may require. Uh, thanks very much for your time, and have a good day.